it's Feedback Gaming. Welcome back, time for a new video. We're going to go through the top 5 alt history mods in Hearts of Iron 4 that are currently out. The criteria for this list is it has to be an alternative history. It cannot be a fantasy mod of some kind, such as uh, the zombie mod or the War of the Worlds mod. It has to be something prior that's happened in history before World War II that creates and changes the events leading up to that point. At number five, it's the mod called No Treaty of Versailles. This is a small mod, you've probably not even heard of it, and it doesn't make a drastic change to the overall game in comparison to some of the others on this list. But I particularly enjoyed this mod. I like the changes that were made, and I feel like it made a, a worthy impact on the game to make it part of this list. The first thing you can see is Alsace and Lorraine are still part of Germany. The German Empire is it's still its full glory. Also, the Austrian Empire still exists, which only consists of the German majority speaking areas. So you can still, it still controls the Sudeten, where the Czech, Hungary and Yugoslav areas have broken free. To take into account these changes, the national focus tree for Germany has been revamped and updated. Now the changes have been that Anschluss will take into account the territories that Austria has now. And Danziger war has been replaced with North Italy or war. So now you've got an option to take a large chunk of Northern Italy or go to war with Italy instead. It's not historical, but it allows you to create a massive super Germany, which I think would make multiplayer games very interesting. Also as well, the Allies have been split into two factions, one the Commonwealth and one the Allies. Just to summarize, so it adds a new focus tree for Germany, it changes the alliances for the Allies, it changes the national focuses to take into account of the new territories that Germany has, and this will make an insanely fun multiplayer experience. The only downside is this is a pretty small mod. In comparison to some of the others that I'm going to show, you're going to probably think, why have I included this mod in the list? But I wanted to include a variety, and we're going to start off with a, a relatively smaller one. At number four, it is Emperor of the World. The Emperor of the World mod is an overhaul of Hearts of Iron 4, where Napoleon won the Napoleonic Wars completely unconditionally. The result of that, the British Empire is completely dismantled, even to the stage where Ireland is completely unified and Scotland is reborn in a larger state. And consequence of that, Belgium never declared independence, Germany was kept fragmented and unified, and so was Italy. So there was never a unification of Italy and Germany as independent states. And with a knock-on effect as well, uh, Louisiana still consists as a state, part of France, so the Americas never push any further west. Uh, India becomes fragmented as it was unified under the British Raj. And because of that as well, China is untouched by the major powers in Europe and is a lot more powerful in this game. This mod offers the biggest national focus tree that I have ever seen for England and France. But it also does add it for a lot of other states as well, such as a unified Sweden, including Norway and Finland, as well as at one for Italy and Austria, as well as the United States. It seems like kind of a minor note, but I really like the colours that they've chose for the nations inside of Europe. Um, there is a tendency, particularly in Hearts of Iron 4, where a lot of the countries have kind of a dark, beige, flushed out, low hue, where in this mod they really pop out. Similar to the 100 years of uncontested power of the British Empire, the game starts when the French Empire is waning. With a weak leadership of France, nations are starting to question the order of the world, and because of that, new ideologies are appearing around the world contesting the French power. This mod adds a total of eight new ideologies, which is really great. The problem is, is these ideologies have new names and they're not the common ideologies we use today. So you feel like you need to do some research on the law of this game to actually understand what the ideologies actually mean. At number three, it is Apremont de la Deluge, which has recently been renamed to just Deluge on Steam Workshop, which is yet again another alternative history where Napoleon won the Napoleonic Wars. 
but this time it was not an unconditional victory. The British Empire did remain relatively intact with some minor losses, but the French Empire did hold on to its control onto the continent and continue the continental system for many years afterwards. The game adds one new ideology which feels like the number one ideology of the world that Napoleon and the ancestors of Napoleon have hung on to and that is monarchist. Most of the major powers are monarchists at the start of the game, the Kingdom of Rome, uh, the French Empire, Kingdom of Spain as well as the British Empire. This sets the stage for a domino effect of revolutions that happen around the world and as France tries to cling on to its existing power in the side of the continental Europe. The reason why this mod was one ahead of Emperor of the World is because the creativity of the National Focus Tree as well as the political advisors. In Vanilla Hearts of Iron 4, political advisors either shift you all towards fascism, communism or a democracy. In this mod, not only do they shift you towards one of the four ideologies, uh, they also give you a buff as well. So what you can do is you can make a combination of advisors with opposing views to get the most benefits of all the different ideologies. And this also reflects in the generic focus tree as well as the other more complex focus trees for the major powers where you have options to diversify your ideology to result in more subsequent benefits. Not only does this not create the same old game where everyone ends up in a 100% democracy, fascism or communism, uh, but it also adds quite a fun role playing element. One final note about the focus trees in this mod, which it does well, is it gives lots of options where you have to split off and choose between differing ideologies as well as other options that you have to choose between. And some of the options are a very difficult choice where they're not just black and white, which I think it makes it quite challenging in how you can play the game differently. At number two, it's Wild Krieg. Wild Krieg is an alternative history where if Germany had won the First World War. The result of that is the German Empire is intact with some gains into France and Belgium as well, as well as a buffer state set up in the east. Also, the Austrian Empire still remains intact, which it consists of the United States of Greater Austria, which is a democracy. The Soviet Union still exists with uh, large territorial losses in Eastern Europe as well as the Caucasus and the central steppes of Asia. The mod has four contesting factions, the Fascists, the Democratic League of Nations, the German Economic Union, the Monarchists, and finally the, the Communist Comintern. Also one nice little extra touch, there is a minister for you to push more towards non-aligned neutrality if you want to. All the major powers have national focus trees, I enjoyed the Ottoman one as it allowed you to slowly, piece by piece, rebuild the Ottoman Empire from the ground up. Another really good touch was the diversity of different laws and training options, with the focus on quantity or quality, press laws and family policy, depending on economic or population growth. One small pet peeve, it does look like this mod has discontinued development, as some of the descriptions of national focuses and their names are just generic placeholders. There was a few other honourable mentions that I'd like to go through now. Uh, that includes the Man in the High Castle mod, uh, the Fallout mod, and the Castle Wolfenstein mod. I checked all of them out, and they're all so, so, so early in development that I don't feel like they're good enough to be on this list. But I will keep an eye on them in future. And finally, at number one, it is the Kaiserreich mod. I don't need to be the one to tell you how popular the Kaiser Wright mod is. It was a mod for Hearts of Iron 3 as well as Victoria 2 and it finds its rightful place in Hearts of Iron 4. The mod takes place after a victorious Germany in the First World War where it's gained territories of inside of France, as Wallonia as a puppet as well as uh, several states to the east buffering them from Russia. The Austrian Empire has fragmented but has still relative autonomy over its former states, which is a melting pot to come in this scenario. After a disastrous defeat of the French and the British in the First World War, it caused a rise of radicalization and the rise of the syndicalists. The syndicalists overthrew the government 
and sent the French into exile into North Africa and the British into exile into Canada. This makes some absolutely awesome focus trees where you have to regain your glory and try and take back the homeland. The catalyst that sets off the tidal wave of revolution, rebellion and war is the German stock market crash. This causes a second Soviet revolution Russia and it also causes a civil war to happen in the Americas and splitting them into three warring factions. The national focus trees are very complex and very detailed and there are so many of them. There's also a new political system where you gain more political power depending on how popular your existing political party is. And there's also a stability system where based on how much political power you have allows you to move up and down. Very similar to how it is in Europa Universalis. These features don't exist in vanilla Hearts of Iron 4 and the fact they've used the limited editing tools in Hearts of Iron 4 to create these new features out of nowhere blows my mind. This mod is getting a lot of attention and is currently still in development and the only area I can say where the game is a little bit weak is in the late game where there tends to be a lack of events and kind of feels like every country moved towards 100% of that particular ideology where it would be nice to have some events to kind of break up the late game. And that's it. If you've enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. Turn on notifications by clicking on the bell icon and drop us a comment below of another top 5 or top 10 series that I could do involving mods. Guys, I hope you have a good day and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.